Hello everyone. Today we're going to be coloring another page from the new coloring book that I got. I'm so excited because it's kooky and different and I'm convinced that this might be one of the nicest papers that I've seen in a coloring book in a long time. So let's get started. Now the first thing I wanna do is pull a handful of colors just to kick off my color palette. And these won't be the only ones that I'm gonna be using, I'm just kinda of using it as a little bit of a jumping off point. I've got a few oranges, a few blues, a few greens, and these are going to be the colors on her butterfly crown. Now, admittedly, I looked up a few butterfly inspiration images just to kind of get some creative juices flowing. Now, the modern internet is a wonderful resource, so I like to take full advantage of it and encourage you guys to do the same. You might think you know what a butterfly looks like, but when it comes to all that little detail on them and the wide variety of butterflies that there are, a reference image can be a lifesaver, especially in a situation like this, where a good portion of the butterfly wings have kind of been left a bit open for us to play with. So if you want more detail than what the artist has drawn in for you, you kind of need to create that yourself. Which, I mean, I certainly don't think that I nailed this, but um, it's 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 not bad, you know, by any means. I did have a hard time kind of creating those veining lines on the butterfly wings. They were so pretty in the reference. Ref I cannot say that word. They were so pretty in the reference images, and they looked easy to create. But I did have a hard time um, just kind of making them look the way that I wanted to. It's good practice, but definitely need some more practice to nail this one. Now I ended up being much happier on the blue butterfly for some reason. I don't know if it was just the colors that I really ended up liking, um, but actually here's a nice trick that I learned um, that I'll kind of share with you guys. You'll notice that I started off that first layer with a Crayola pencil in slate gray, and I just put down a really nice light layer with that, just a really kind of muted, muted blue. And then I went right over top of that with my Prismacolor Electric Blue. And the reason that I did that is because I really like the tone of the electric blue, but it's just a touch too electric. So starting that first layer with slate and then going over that very lightly with the electric blue just kind of gives you a really nice muted sort of toned down version because layering colors, total lifesaver. Now when it came to the green butterfly, I wanted to choose some minty greens, which I thought would complement that blue and orange, and I think it turned out really nicely. And I did wanna keep uh, these butterflies just a little bit more simple, um, so I chose not to add in too much detail at this point. I just wanted them to be a little bit less busy since they were in the background, so I didn't go full on like I did with the other butterflies here on the green one. And I don't know what this oval shaped thing here in the middle of her head is. So I just kind of decided that it was part of the green butterfly and I colored it accordingly. Now at this point, I think we could use another color group. So I just pulled some dusty pinks to go with our color palette. And I think I'm gonna concentrate this on the butterfly wings that are in the background here, especially because it's kind of starting to get a little bit difficult differentiating which wings belong to which butterfly and what some of these shapes are. So I decided to keep these a bit more simple um, on the backside here too. And on top of these dusty pinks, I wanted a pop of color. So this raspberry will work nicely, but kind of similar to that blue situation that I just told you guys about, um, all of these kind of muted uh, rose colors will kind of tone down this raspberry a little bit too. And it's a Crayola pencil, so it's not as super pigmented. So you can use a really nice light hand here and you know, it won't come out so bright. Now let's snazz up these butterflies with some paint pens and some markers. Uh, first, I'm actually gonna use my white Posca pen on the blue butterfly. And I'm just trying to mimic some of those small, kind of larger dots that I saw on the butterflies in some of my uh, inspiration photos. For the orange butterfly, I think I'm actually gonna pull out my metallic gold marker, which I think will go with those oranges really nicely. So I'm just gonna do the same thing here, nothing crazy, just my typical kind of Morse code dots and dashes. 
And just to switch it up and use all of the fun tools, I'm actually going to try my white gel pen on the green butterfly, just to see how it stacks up to the white Posca pen. And to be honest, I like both of these equally. Uh, right now, they're fulfilling two kind of different purposes. As my smaller tipped Posca pen ran out, so I can use this white gel pen when I want just a nice thin layer, and then I can use the larger nibbed Posca pen when I want sort of those larger dots or lines. And the Posca pens come in a wide variety of sizes and colors. I've just been too lazy to order them. Switching it up again, we're gonna use the metallic silver marker on the pink butterfly. Now these metallic markers that I'm using, the gold and the silver, these were actually part of a set that a company called Chocola sent me last year. You can get these on Amazon and I'll leave a link to them down in the description. Not sponsored, but um, they are just kind of fun to use. And they're chalk markers that can be used on blackboards. They don't erase, but they but they do kind of go over nicely on, on blackboards and show up really nice and opaque. Um, that you can use them on car windshields, windows, stuff like that. Um, but I'd like using them for coloring and just kind of adding little embellishments with them because they go right over top of my colored pencils. Now down here at the bottom of the page, there's some fun leaf shapes that all these cute little flowers are kind of emanating from. So for these, I'm gonna reuse the same blues and greens that we used on the butterflies above, using the light colors for my highlights and the dark colors for some shading. And I am combining the blues and the greens together here, which we did not do above. And that's just gonna give me just a little bit of difference from what's above on the butterflies, but that's but the two will still very much talk to each other and, and, and read as cohesive. And a dry cotton swab works great for blending these colors too. Now for the little flowers, let's reuse our pink colors. And colored pencil wise, I wanna keep these simple as well as I'll be adding some embellishment on top of these two. So the pencil layer will just kinda of act as a great background. And I wanna introduce a little bit of a deeper tone on these than what I'm getting. So I think I'm just gonna add in some orchid right here in the center. Onto the embellishment with my white gel pen. I'm just gonna run a thin line along some of the outer edge of the flower petals. I'm not doing it on all of the sides though. I'm gonna be a bit choosy with it and try to alternate you know, which sides I'm doing from flower to flower. And sometimes it just takes a sec for the gel pen to kind of get going, get its ink going uh, for some reason, but once it does, it really works great. And we'll add some Morse code to the leaf shapes as well. And I'm just following the shape of the leaf lines themselves, just kind of as my guide. It just kind of kind of mimics um, or creates like a parallel line um, and just kind of matches the flow. And it might be tough to tell from the camera angle here, and I'll show you guys uh, at the end, but the light is hitting um, these white gel pen lines. It looks really, really good. Now I didn't forget about the yellow and orange color that we used above. We're gonna come back to that now and we're gonna make our woman blonde. And I'm not gonna use the exact same colors as I did on the butterfly, they're just a bit too orange. Uh, but my blonde colors that I'll be choosing will still complement and speak back to some of those lighter yellows that are there. Um, I'm not really very good at coloring hair. This is definitely an area uh, that I could benefit from some practice in. And actually this book is perfect for that because most of the pages are faces and hair. So that works out really, really nicely to practice on. And speaking of faces, I'm trying to keep this one simple as well, as the focus is really what's going on kind of around her face. And I'm just gonna use two different beige colors just to give her just a little bit of um, uh, shadow here under her bangs and um, on her neck and whatnot. Uh, and then a little bit of rose to color her cheeks and some of the other areas. Now this kind of Caucasian skin tone is a lot pinker than you think it is, so adding this rose will just kind of give it a little bit of warmth. And actually faces are another thing that I could definitely use some practice in. Um, and I'm actually planning to use this book to practice different skin tones, um, you know, just for a little bit of a uh, little bit of fun, a little bit of practice. Now I think this background could use something special. Nothing too distracting since the page itself has plenty to look at. Um, so I'm just gonna start by outlining a circle 
around her face. And it's going to be a rough circle at that. I could not find my compass to save my life uh, to draw a perfect circle. So I just folded a piece of paper and then kind of eyeballed it. And it's far from a perfect circle, but that's actually okay because I have something planned for that outer perimeter line. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm, I'm not worried about it. I do, however, want to minimize my pencil line, so I'm just using really, really light pressure here. It's just going to kind of act as my guide. And in hindsight, I actually could have used um, the pale sage green color that I'm going to be coloring inside this circle to make my outer perimeter line, um, but it's all good. No harm done. And like I said, I'm just going to fill this circle in with pale sage. And we've already used it on our butterflies above, um, albeit we used it sparingly. Um, so adding it in now will balance out very nicely. Again, nothing special, just filling in the circle. Uh, very light pressure, but definitely a full coverage layer here. And I'm actually gonna add in just a touch of this teal color towards the middle kind of center of the circle. Um, but I do want this to be very, very subtle. Now for the fun part. Along the perimeter, I'm going to add in some white dots with my Posca pen. Totally random, um, but I do kind of want some trailing outwards towards the white area and then a little bit back into the green circle, but not too much. You know, most of them are going to be concentrated kind of around this uh, perimeter line. That's where their main kind of focus uh, quantity of them will be. And I'm just gonna go all the way around my circle with this. Then I'm gonna do the same with the metallic gold marker. I like the combination of white and gold dots. I think it looks really dynamic, but in hindsight, I actually wish I had done the colors in reverse. Um, I would have done the gold first and then the white on top of that so that where the colors overlap, I think that the white would have shown up a lot more on top of the gold instead of the other way around just because the background itself is so light. And I don't want to add in another layer of white at this point to kind of get that effect, just because there's a lot of dots here and I, I think it just might get a little bit too crowded. Also, just a quick, quick announcement. Um, since it's summer and I'm just kind of getting super busy, um, I'm going to do my best to keep up with weekly videos. But if I miss one or, you know, here or there, that's why. Um, I might even go to a bit more of a fluid schedule just to stay sane. You know, it's a little bit, um, you know, tough having the expectation of, you know, Friday morning upload. Um, so, if, you know, it might be on a Wednesday, it might be on a Tuesday, it might be on a Sunday. Um, but like I said, I'm going to try to do my best to uh, keep the videos coming. But that is it. This page is done and in the book. Uh, I really like how this one came out. This is exactly the type of result that I was hoping for when I picked out this book. And it makes me very excited to do even more pages, which like I said, we'll have more in the next couple of weeks. Please hit the like button if you enjoy this video and the subscribe button if you're new. Check out my back catalog for lots more colored pencil and coloring tutorials. And I'll see you guys next time. Happy coloring.